Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, in a country called China, there lived an emperor who ruled over the land. The emperor's palace was one of the great wonders of the world. It was made of the finest porcelain, which was so delicate that you could only touch it with the greatest of care. In the palace garden, only the rarest flowers bloomed, and the most beautiful ones were tied with little silver bells that tinkled in the breeze, so that no one could pass by without admiring their beauty. All things were arranged perfectly in the emperor's garden. And it was so vast that even the gardener did not know how far and wide it extended. If you kept walking, after some time you would come to a fine forest where the trees were tall and the lakes were so clear you could see right down to the bottom. The forest ran all the way to the deep blue sea so that even the tallest of ships could sail under its branches. And in one of these trees lived the nightingale. His song was so stunning that even the fisherman, who was always quite busy, could not help but stop and listen to the nightingale sing. How beautiful is the song of the nightingale, the fisherman would say. He could never stay long, for he had work to attend to, but he would never forget the bird's song. From all over the world, travellers came to the city of the emperor. They admired the palace and its gardens, but when they heard the nightingale sing, they would say, That is the best of all. And the travellers told stories of it when they returned home. And some of them wrote books about the city, the palace and the garden. But they never forgot the nightingale. They praised him most of all. Those who were poets wrote poems about the bird who lived in the forest by the deep sea at the edge of the garden of the emperor. The books were sold all over the world and some of them even made their way to the emperor of China. He would sit in his golden chair and read them nodding his head in delight over such pleasing descriptions of his city, his palace, and his garden. But when he read of the nightingale, the emperor was surprised, for he knew nothing about it. What? What is this? the emperor exclaimed. I do not know of any nightingale. Can there be such a bird in my empire? in my own garden and I do not know of it? To think that I should have to learn such a thing out of a book! Straight away, he called his lord in waiting. I have read that there is a most remarkable bird called the nightingale. They say it is the best thing in all my empire. Why have I not been told about it? The lord-in-waiting replied, well, I have uh, never heard the name mentioned, um, Imperial Majesty. He has not been presented at court. I command that he appear before me this very evening to sing, said the emperor. Such a shameful thing that the whole world should know my possessions better than I. I shall find him. But the lord-in-waiting had no idea where to find the nightingale. He had met no one who had ever told him of this bird. Panicked, he ran upstairs and downstairs, into every bedroom and down every corridor. But he found no nightingale. The Lord-in-waiting went back to the Emperor and said, um, It must be a story made up by those who write books. I could find no bird called Nightingale, and so it must not be true. 
your Imperial Majesty would scarcely believe how much of what is written is false. The book I read was sent to me by the mighty Emperor of Japan. Therefore, it cannot be filled with lies. I must hear this nightingale. I insist upon his presence this very evening. He has my high imperial favor, and if he is not forthcoming, I will have the whole court sent to bed directly after supper with no entertainment at all. The Lord in waiting scurried out of the room and through the palace with half the court following him, for no one wanted to go to bed straight after dinner. What a punishment that would be! They questioned everyone they could find, but found no one who knew of him. Then at last, they asked one of the little kitchen girls. Do you know the nightingale? She replied, The nightingale? Yeah, I know him well. He has the most beautiful voice. Every evening I take my leave to carry scraps from my table home to my mother. She lives by the sea. It's a long way, you see. So, when I start back, I am tired and often rest in the woods. From there, I hear the nightingale sing his song. It is so glorious, it brings tears to my eyes. A little girl, said the Lord-in-waiting, I will have you appointed head kitchen maid and even grant you permission to watch the Emperor dine if you take us to the nightingale who is commanded by the emperor himself to be at court this very evening. It would be my honour, replied the little kitchen girl. And so she led them into the forest. Along the way, a cow began to moo. Oh, cried one of the courtiers. That must be it. What a powerful voice for a creature so small. I'm sure I've never heard such beauty before. <laughs> That is only a cow, said the little kitchen girl. We still have quite a long way to go. Then the frogs in the marsh began to croak. Oh, how glorious, said another courtier. It sounds like temple bells ringing. No, said the little kitchen girl. Those are the frogs croaking. But we are growing nearer and we shall hear him soon. And it was not long after that that the nightingale sang. <gasps> That's him, said the little kitchen girl. Listen, there he sits. She pointed to a little grey bird sitting high up in the branches. Could it be possible, cried the lord-in-waiting. I would never have thought such a beautiful song would belong to such an unassuming bird. He has probably grown nervous at seeing so many important people around him. Little Nightingale, called the kitchen girl. Our emperor liked to hear you sing. With the greatest of pleasure, answered the Nightingale, and he burst into song. I, I do believe he shall be a great success at court, said the Lord-in-waiting. When the nightingale had finished his song, he asked, Shall I sing to the emperor again? For he thought that the emperor was present. Oh, my good little nightingale, I have the honour to command your presence at court this very evening, where you will delight his imperial majesty the emperor with your glorious song. My song sounds best in the woods, among the trees replied the nightingale. But I suppose I shall try it at court, if the emperor commands it. And so he went with them. The emperor had had the palace polished for this special occasion. The porcelain walls and floors glowed in the rays of the golden lamps. The flowers tinkled with bells, and the air was filled with the sweet smell of the most succulent and mouth-watering dinner. In the middle of the great throne room, where the emperor sat, 
there was now a golden perch for the nightingale. The whole court was in attendance. The little kitchen girl was there too, now that she had been appointed imperial kitchen maid. Everyone was dressed in their best, and they all stared intently at the little grey bird. The emperor nodded, and the nightingale began to sing. How exquisite, said the emperor. The little bird sang so sweetly that tears came to the emperor's eyes and rolled down his cheeks. Then the nightingale sang more sweetly still, and the emperor's heart melted. He was so touched that he wanted his own golden slipper hung around the nightingale's neck. But the nightingale declined. He felt he had already been rewarded. I have seen tears in the emperor's eyes which nothing can surpass. An emperor's tears are precious. I have been given the greatest reward I could ask for. And then he sang again, even more gloriously. The ladies-in-waiting commented, It is the most charming song we have ever heard. Everyone in the palace could hear the echo of this sweet song. It was unquestionable that the nightingale's performance was a great success. He was to stay at court and have his own cage. He had permission to go out for a walk and to fly about any time he wanted, but twelve footmen were to attend him. They followed him everywhere, so there was not much freedom. The whole city was alight with talk about the marvellous bird. One day, the emperor received a large package labelled the nightingale. This must be yet another book about my celebrated bird, he thought. But it was not a book at all. When he opened the box, he found an extraordinary work of art. It was an artificial nightingale that looked just like the real one, except it was encrusted with diamonds and rubies and sapphires. And when it was wound, the artificial bird could sing one of the nightingale's songs as it wagged its glittering gold and silver tail. Around its neck hung a ribbon with a note embroidered, The Emperor of Japan's nightingale is naught compared with that of the Emperor of China. The entire court commented on how nice a gift it was, and the man who had brought the contraption was immediately given the title Imperial Nightingale Maker. Now, let us have them sing together what a duet it shall be, said the emperor. But when they did sing together, it did not turn out very well. For the real nightingale sang whatever came into his head, while the imitation bird only sang one song. That is not the newcomer's fault, said the nightingale maker. He is able to uh, keep perfect time, just as I have taught him. Then the court had the imitation bird sing on its own. It sounded just like the real nightingale. And since the courtiers thought it much prettier to look at, they preferred it. They wanted to hear it sing again and again. But the emperor said that the real nightingale should now have his turn. But where was he? No one had noticed. But he had flown out of the open window back to his home in the great forest. Oh. I cannot understand what made him do that, said the emperor. All the courtiers were upset with the nightingale, who they now thought the most ungrateful wretch. We are lucky to have the best bird, they said. 
and they made the imitation bird sing once again. When he sang, it was the 35th time he had sung the same tune, but they did not notice as it was such a beautiful piece. And the nightingale maker was praised. He said, My bird is better in all ways than the real nightingale. You see, ladies and gentlemen of the court, and above all, your imperial majesty, with a real nightingale, no one ever knows what to expect. But with my bird, everything will always go according to plan. Nothing will be left to chance. The court exclaimed, These are our sentiments exactly. And so the nightingale maker was commanded to bring the bird every Sunday for a public concert as the emperor felt that all his people should hear it. And hear it they did. Everyone loved it. Except the little kitchen girl and the fisherman who had heard the real nightingale and preferred him. The fisherman told his wife, It is a very pretty song. But it's not the same, not even close. The real nightingale was banished from all the land. And now the artificial bird sat on a cushion beside the emperor's bed. It was given the title Grand Imperial Singer of the Emperor to Sleep. In no time at all, the nightingale maker had written a 50-volume book about the artificial bird. It was very long and full of very hard words, yet everyone said they read and understood it for fear of showing themselves to not have understood. After a year had passed, the emperor and his court, and even some others, knew every tweet of the artificial song by heart. They liked it all the better now that they could sing it themselves, which they did. Zee, 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 cluck, cluck, cluck. The emperor sang it too. That's how popular the song had become. But one night, while the artificial bird was singing his best by the emperor's bed, something inside the bird broke. And the music stopped. The emperor jumped out of bed and sent for the nightingale maker. But he was nowhere to be found. Then he sent for his own physician. But what could he do? Then he sent for a watchmaker who investigated and patched up the bird as best he could. But the watchmaker said the bird must be spared too much exertion for his cogs were badly worn and if he replaced them, it would spoil the tune. (laughs) This is terrible, said the emperor. They could now only have the bird sing once per year and that was almost too much for it. Five years passed, and the whole country had fallen into sorrow, for their beloved emperor had fallen ill, and a new emperor had been chosen and prepared. The courtiers stood in the palace and asked the lord-in-waiting how their emperor fared. He is not well. And all the courtiers prepared for the new emperor to take the throne. Alone in his bed, the emperor cried out, Music! Music! Sing, my my precious bird, sing! I have hung my golden slipper around your neck. Sing! I pray you, give me one last song. But the bird remained silent. Then, suddenly, the window burst open and in came the most glorious song. It was the real nightingale. He had heard the emperor was unwell and had come to sing for him. And as he sang, the emperor began to recover. The nightingale sat outside on a branch near the window and sang all through the night. And by sunrise, the emperor was much better. Thank you, thank you, cried the emperor. Bird from heaven above, I banished you from my land. And yet you have returned and sung away my illness and 
ended this sorrow from my heart. How can I ever repay you? You have already rewarded me, your highness, said the nightingale. When I first sang to you, I brought tears to your eyes. To the heart of a singer, those are more precious than anything. But sleep now and grow strong. I shall sing to you. And sing he did. He sang on until the emperor fell into a deep sleep. The sun was shining when the emperor awoke. And still the nightingale sang. You must stay with me always, I, I beg you. Sing to me only when you please, and never again shall the artificial bird be heard. No, replied the nightingale. He did its best. Keep it near you, for I cannot build my nest here or live in a palace. So let me come as I will. And when I do, I will sit on this branch by your window and sing. I will sing a sorrowful tune. I will sing a happy tune. I will sing of the desires of the heart. My songs will tell you of all the good and evil that you do not see. A bird such as myself must fly far and wide. I love your heart better than I do your crown. I will come and sing to you if you will promise me one thing. All that I have is yours, cried the emperor. Then promise me this. You must never let anyone know that you have a little bird who tells you everything. Do this and all will be well. And away the nightingale flew, and the emperor smiled, for he knew that he would be back. The End And now it's time to take a deep breath, close our eyes, so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>